We've all tasted enough wine to know a relatively good wine from a relatively bad wine. But for those who aren't experts, attempting to navigate all the, the different wine jargon can be um, so frustrating, it'll <laughs> actually it'll drive you to drinking. There's all kinds of bad information floating around out there, and I'm going to suggest that for a minute you forget everything you know about wine and pay close attention. In this video, you'll learn how to confidently tell a good wine from a bad wine. Come on, let's have at it. The wine world is full of myths and false facts. As time goes by, gradually we're learning uh, the, the facts from the fiction, but still some misinformation is floating around out there. My name is Pierre Asti and I'm a sommelier and I'm here to, to clear up some of the more obvious myths, truths, and misunderstandings surrounding our beloved grape juice. I have over a dozen uh, videos in, in this series already. Uh, be sure to check out the full playlist. Some episodes are more in-depth covering just one myth, while others, like this one, cover several myths all in one video. As we dive into today's myths, if you like what you hear, click like, subscribe, and hit the little bell so you'll be notified when there are new posts. Also, make sure you share this with your friends to dispel some of the false facts or the myths. Okay, as we seek clarity in how to identify whether a wine is good or bad, we need to address four key points. These sub-myths pertain to vintage, reserve wines, estate wines, and first growth. Let's start with vintage. The myth goes something like this. There's a huge difference in the quality of wineries wine from vintage to vintage. So the fact of the matter is, it depends on where the winery is located. In regions where uh, the, the weather is truly marginal or can fluctuate pretty dramatically from year to year, you really need to, to watch what you're doing and watch what you're buying. For instance, in Burgundy, France, it has been notorious for having periodic dramatic swings in its weather. In Burgundy, yes, vintage can make a huge difference. However, in a place like Napa Valley, and for that matter, most of California, as well as Spain and Portugal and in Chile and Argentina, uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, bad years are really rare. Watching vintage may be fi a fine strategy for investors, those who buy great wines with the intent of holding on to them for a decade or so and or uh, reselling them for for a profit but for people like you and me who who simply want to enjoy good wine it's a mistake to be concerned about vintages before we move on to our, our second area of focus i want to take just a moment to talk about weather versus climate as we discussed Annual deviations in weather can impact the quality of a particular vintage. Climate change, on the other hand, will have a macro effect. Over the long haul, the change in climate will affect growing seasons and more specifically, which grapes can be grown and not grown in certain areas. As an example, wineries in Bordeaux, France are beginning to transition out of traditional Bordeaux grapes and are beginning to, to bring into Bordeaux grapes that are indigenous to Spain. This is all due to climate change. All right, the second myth goes something like this. Reserve wines are top of the line wines. I can make this, this one really pretty quick. On American labels at least, the word or designation reserve has no true meaning and is used at the discretion of a particular winemaker. The term is often used to, to designate a special wine, although the reputation of the vineyard will, will typically have a greater effect on the quality and price of the wine. 
How are you doing there? Is this information helpful? Is it making sense? If it is, write good wine in the comments below. The third myth goes something like this. Estate wines are a winery's best wines. Now, bear with me on this because it could be a bit confusing because I'm going to talk about estate wines versus single vineyard wines. The reason this matters is because the term estate on a wine's label uh, does not guarantee that the wine is better than its single vineyard counterpart. These terms just tell us where the grapes are from or the reality, the business model of the producer. An estate wine can come from many vineyards as long as all are owned or controlled by the estate winery. A single vineyard wine, in addition to being made from just one vineyard, hence the name, could actually be made from a vineyard that is not owned by the winery that bottled it. <laughs> that's, that's the simple part. Now, did you know that wine can be both estate bottled and meet the criteria for single vineyard designation? Earlier, I said an estate bottled wine can be made from grapes from multiple vineyards, but it doesn't have to be. It's allowed to be, but not required. What is required is that the wine is made entirely from grapes owned by the winery and is made entirely on the winery's property. That means it does not ever leave the property during fermentation, aging, or bottling. Now in the US, the estate term has been expanded to include not only vineyards owned by the, the wine label, but also ones that are managed or controlled by the winery, even if they're actually owned by someone else. You know, the legal requirements uh, to put the name of a single vineyard on a label varies slightly worldwide. Now in the US, 95% of the grapes have to come from the property. Again, because the term estate versus single vineyard designation is more of a legal term than reflects how uh, producers run their business, I found no evidence that either approach equals a better wine. Our fourth and last myth to bust has to do with what's called first growth. Actually, this is less a myth and more a confusing use of terminology perpetuated by some U.S. wine producers. In some small pockets of the United States and really actually other parts of the world, some vineyards use the term first growth to signify these are the grapes that they harvested first. Now in the wine industry at large, this is not at all what first growth is. When we in the industry talk about first growth, we're talking about the highest quality wines coming out of France. So some U.S. winemakers are using the term first growth to infer that their first harvested grapes are wines that are world class. Now, actually, let me back up a second. To understand this, we need to do a two second French class. French growth, excuse me, that's easy for me to say. First growth is the English translation of the French words premier cru, and that designation is used in Bordeaux, Burgundy, Champagne, and throughout France, nowhere else. In 1855, Napoleon, the French emperor of France, I guess the French emperor would be of France, uh, wanted French wines to become world renowned. He had the French wine industry rate the, the chateaus, that's vineyard in French, based on their quality, price, and reputation. The classification was called cru, or in English, growth. All vineyards were rated one through five, with number one being the highest, best, and most prestigious. That designation holds up even today. There are only five premier cru chateaus first growth vineyards in the, the world. Nowadays, wines from these vineyards will cost anywhere from, 
from several hundred to several thousand dollars per bottle. So, when you see American wines that are first growth, in most cases they're trying to leverage the French term or infer that their wines are of highest quality, world-class wines, when in fact all they've done is harvested these grapes first or are trying to give the perception they have world-class wines. This is somewhat deceptive. <laughs> well, there you have it. We have just busted four wine myths. With these in, in your tool belt, you're now equipped to look beyond the fancy labels that may try to sway your rating of wine. Folks, remember, if you want to be certified as a Nasty Wine Consultant's official wine mythbuster, then check out the playlist. We have quite a number of episodes to choose from. Also, be sure to click the, the link in the description and fill out the form. I look forward to having you join me on this journey. Hey Posse, thanks so much for investing the time to watch this video. I trust it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And please consider hitting subscribe. Also, click here to check out our new online shop. We have a great lineup of wine related items that will help you get the most out of your wine experience. Oh, and be sure to check out these other videos. Until next time, cheers.